Great Blackberry Pick is an HLF funded project, World War One project. The aim was to get very young children, so first school children around seven and eight, involved in the commemoration of World War One. And we went in and we took primary sources such as the Princess Mary box and the Dead Man's Penny, and they got to have a hands-on experience at going through these and seeing photographs at the time. And one of the things that we did was take them blackberry picking because the logbooks from the local schools showed us that that's exactly what children would be doing 100 years ago. Of course, they absolutely loved this. They loved blackberry picking. They loved being out in the field, doing something different, missing lessons. But they also got it. They got the fact that they were now reenacting what children had done 100 years ago. We had a series of ideas in setting up the day. One was to really raise the profile of food, food both in terms of, of producing it in terms of preparing it and preserving it. And I think we did that really well. Suddenly there's a focus on food, a thinking about food, but I think also it's about the academics realizing the huge wealth of research and knowledge that there is going on in small village projects and how some of that really good research that they're producing actually disturbs some of the ideas and theories that we have in our minds. Women, that is so difficult to find out about. Um, <laughs> they, they're almost invisible, aren't they? Yes, um, yeah, hidden from history. Um, having listened to the talk this morning about local food commi control committees, um, that's one area that I hadn't thought of looking at to see if there was a woman representative, which I, I will go back to the hive and look. Yes, yeah, it's worth it. Yes. Um, a lot of uh, county council stuff was weeded out though unfortunately in the 50s so um, yeah it's working what you've got it's sort of almost reading with women's history it's reading between the lines <laughs> yes. as well yeah. as what uh, appears in print. It's about bringing the different community projects together I think it can be quite a lonely thing you can uh, doing a history project you can think how typical is it? I'm, I'm having difficulties here, I'm not having difficulties there, it, it's not turned out the way I thought it would be. And to talk to other people doing projects, I think, can be really important. And the purpose of the War Pension Committee was to t determine whether women were fit to have an allowance. And they investigated any complaint about a wife or a widow um, which left women open to any malicious charge. The stories of the ordinary women living and working on the estate have been particularly difficult to find. The World War I in the Vale project is gathering information on the middle class women who served on multiple committees in Pershaw, and it will be interesting to find out what, if any, activities estate women labourers were involved in. In the spring of 1917, the House of Commons was informed that the country had only three or four weeks supply of food in stock. And as a consequence, in the summer of 1917, a new initiative was taken at the local level to address the increasing tension. And with it, I want to argue, came a new possibility for articulating a woman-focused politics of food. A lot of the um, conferences I go to are all academics and uh, often we don't get another dimension to our research. Um, and I think for it to be seen in the public domain is, is really important. I'm actually working with Croom Court. I'm doing a poetry project. It's called Plum Lines and we're working with different groups of people, running workshops to uh, get lots of people to create poems about a female relative from World War I. I was surprised by the amount of emotion that it stirred up. There was one particular woman who'd got a very painful memory and when she turned that into a poem, she found that it really moved her to tears, but also it was quite cathartic for her. We've had community groups, we've had libraries, we've had the local archives represented and we've had speakers from three different universities. So all getting together, all talking, all sharing each other's work. So it's been a real success for me because I don't like to think of people doing their research in little corners. It's great to have them all together. Oh, it was very enjoyable, that, wasn't it, Jean? brilliant. Yeah. I was saying to Maggie, I thought I was a little piece in the jigsaw. <laughs> Yes, and, and it really it, completes it, doesn't it? Yes, what we're doing. and it, it, I didn't realise there were so many 
um, diverse subjects from uh, from the main core of you know WI uh, World War One in the Vale. It's it was just amazing to see how many different groups were involved doing the different things. It is a hugely different experience being somewhere like this than being than sitting in a university lecture theatre. It's, it's, it doesn't matter how hard we try to make it accessible, to be friendly and what have you. It's just different. This is part of the public sphere. This is part of where people bring their grandchildren to play. And that's different from a university.